makes it clear that heart in the biblical sense means the inner person. Therefore the Catholic Church says bishops united them consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart. The whole world has been consecrated to the Immaculate Heart. Now that's fascinating. Let's read a little bit on. This exceptional importance is further confirmed by Mary herself when she appeared at Fatima. Now we have an interesting link. You have seen hell, then come the visions, we've discussed them, the vision of hell, Russia would be consecrated, uh, Pope John Paul II, she didn't mention his name, but he's the one who will suffer, so they said is the third one, and all the world will be uh, dedicated to her immaculate heart. Mary further proclaims that Russia will be converted, and then you have this whole story, the world will be saved by Mary's children those who are devoted to her Immaculate Heart. This is fascinating stuff. Now, let's read an article on the same webpage, Catholic webpage, by none other than the famous Catholic Bishop Fulton Sheen. And see if we can get something from this. In an article, Mary and the Muslims, found in the Mincenti Report, pages 1 to 3, Cardinal Mincenti Foundation considers this exceptionally important. The good bishop says, the Quran, which is the Bible of the Muslims, has many passages concerning the Blessed Virgin. First of, all, first of all, the Quran believes in her immaculate conception. And also in her virgin birth. Her virgin birth. Please note, her virgin birth. Have you got this? She was immaculately conceived and the mother of Mary was sterile. So who is now the saviour? counterfeiting Jesus Christ. This one. What an affront. The third chapter of Quran places the history of Mary's family in a genealogy which goes back through Abraham, Noah and Adam when one compares the Quran's description of the birth of Mary with the apocryphal gospel. Who says the apocryphal gospels must be accepted as canonical? Who says that? The Vatican said that at Council of Trent. Okay, the birth of Mary, one is tempted to believe that Mohammed very much depended upon the latter. You see, Mohammed was married to a Roman Catholic nun, the whole family was Roman Catholic, and he received his doctrine straight from the pits of the bottomless pit. That's what the Bible says. So this doctrine started spreading. And they used Islam first to counteract Christianity, later on splitting it up to get rid of the enemies of Christ, or to get rid of Christ's followers and then to get rid of all the enemies of Rome. Both books describe the old age and the definite sterility of the mother of Mary. Isn't that fascinating stuff? Joseph inquired how she conceived Jesus without the father. Mary answered, do you not know that God when he created the wheat had no need of seed, etc. The Quran has verses of the Annunciation, Visitation, Nativity. Angels are pictured uh, accompanying the Blessed Mother and saying, Oh Mary, God has chosen you and purified you and elected you above all the women of the earth. Do you see the links? Who created who? Did Catholicism create Islam or did perhaps Islam, you think, create Catholicism? Can't be because Catholicism was there before Islam. Same doctrine. There is such a strong defense of the divinity of Mary here in the Quran in the fourth book attributed to the condemnation of the Jews to their monstrous calumny against the Virgin Mary. Now it gets even more exciting. So the bishop says, the two largest religions in the world believe in the fervent devotion to Mary and hold her virtues in very high esteem. And they say, the Muslims and the, comp and the Catholics comprise two billion people together. Well, we're in control. And all we need then is the Orthodox Church, they also have this. It is true too that there are large numbers of Protestants who hold Mary in great favor. Give up your religion, folks. Join the club or else. We'll see. The great Mother Teresa made this point when she summed up the matter in simple and forthright words. No Mary, no Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Okay. So recognition of the Immaculate Conception by the world will tend to bring a closer relationship between the great Christian denominations, Catholic and Orthodox, as well as between Christianity and Islam. 
So what is the synth synthesis they want? A union of the religions. What does Freemasonry teach? Well, Jesus, the son of Joseph, the Lord, the Messiah, and the apostles, and after these, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, with his law, which is the law of Islam, and the disciples of truth followed the law of Islam. The what? The disciples of truth followed Islam. When Christianity had grown weak, profitless, and powerless, the Arab restorer and icon class came like a cleansing hurricane. Wow! The faith of the Arab had become stronger than that of the Christian. This is the true Christian. So Islam is nothing else than Catholicism winning over or defeating Christianity. The Gnostics made a soul descend and and ascend through eight heavens and each of which were certain powers, blah, 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 morals and dogma. And then notice what morals and dogma writes about. In the ancient doctrine, certain genii were charged with the duty of conducting souls to the bodies destined to receive them. Now you've heard about the genie in the bottle, haven't you? Arabian knights rub the bottle and hoo -hoo, here comes the genie. Now what are these genii? 